If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video to reread the question. This is a classic two-dimensional kinematics question, also known as projectile motion. And one of the most helpful things to do with projectile motion questions is to set up a chart involving the X direction and also the Y direction. And in that chart, we're going to include the following five parameters. We have our initial velocity, our final velocity, acceleration, time, and then displacement. Most textbooks label displacement as delta x, but that can actually apply to both the x direction and the y direction, as we will see. The next thing to do is to fill in all the given information. And the question states that the initial velocity is 40 meters per second, but because this is in two dimensions, we're going to have to break that into what are called x and y components. The initial velocity in the x direction is going to be 40 cosine of the given angle, which in this problem is 30 degrees. And the initial velocity in the y direction is 40 sine of 30 degrees. It's next useful to turn to the acceleration. Now in projectile motion questions, unless otherwise specified, the acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared. The acceleration in the y direction under the influence of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Next, we are given the displacement in the horizontal or x direction. You can see in the picture it's labeled and that direction of d is in a x direction. So we're going to include that as the displacement for the x direction. The y displacement is unknown to us and indeed that is exactly what we're looking for. So right now this is an unknown quantity. It's also worth noting that because the acceleration in the x direction is zero, that means that the final velocity in that direction is the same as the initial velocity. That is a key to solving this question. So we can go ahead and fill in the final velocity. So after filling in this chart, we'll notice that the x direction contains much more information than the y direction does. So we're going to be able to solve for the time in the x direction, which we can then carry over to the y direction. Another key strategy to solving this question is realizing that whatever time we solve for in the x can be carried over into the y. So to solve for that time in the x direction, we can use the following kinematics equation. Remembering that we are plugging values into the x direction, we would obtain the following. As noted, once we have the time in the x direction, we can carry that over and plug it into the y direction since those two times are the same. And now that we have the time, we're going to be able to solve for the y direction displacement. And to do that, we can use the following kinematics equation. It's actually the same one that we used before for the x direction. Note that in this case, instead of calling the displacement delta x, I've used delta y just to indicate that we're actually calculating a displacement in the vertical or y direction. So we can go ahead and plug in the known values from the y direction. And once those values are plugged in, we can go ahead and compute the result. And that ends up being the y direction displacement, which is the height of the building.